Rewriting forms of equations. So we've looked at three forms of linear equations, um, and we're going to talk today about manipulating from one to the other. We've talked about standard form a little bit. We're going to talk about that more today. We've talked about slope-intercept form, where I know the slope of a line and I know its y-intercept. And we've also talked about point-slope form, where I know a point on the line, there's an infinite amount of them, so one of them, and I know the line's slope. So let's move from back and forth between those forms. So write y equals 3 fourths x minus 5 in standard form. So we're going to start with our equation the way it is. We want it to get to look like standard form, which we've talked about is ax plus by equals c. And there are a bunch of rules applied to standard form, which we'll talk about. But let's first get it to look like ax plus by equals c. I'm going to subtract my 3 fourths x from both sides. So now I have 3 fourths x plus y equals negative 5. All right, some of the rules for standard form. Um, a has to be greater than or equal to 0. Um, I don't have that, it's negative. Um, also, a, b, and c all have to be integers, so I can't have any fractions. So I'm going to deal with the fact that a is negative, and I've got some fractions in here all at the same time. I'm going to multiply by a negative. I'm also going to multiply by a common denominator. And in this case, there's only one fraction, so that common denominator is 4. So I'm going to multiply by negative 4, which gives me 3x minus 4y equals 20. Let's talk about the rules of standard form here. ax plus by equals c. Yep, it looks like that. A has to be greater than or equal to 0. Yes, that is true. A and B are not both 0. I'm going to talk about this in a minute, so we'll come back to this. A and B are not both 0. So A is 3 and B is negative 4, so they're not both 0. A, B, and C are all integers. A, B, C, all integers, no fractions or decimals. And A, B, and C all have a GCF of 1. Um, so I notice that I don't have any common, don't have a common factor amongst all of them. Now negative 4 and 20 have a common factor of 4, but the 3 does not also have that same common factor. So I can't really do anything to simplify this equation the way it is. If a was 12, for instance, then they would all have a common factor of 4, and I could divide the whole equation by 4, which would simplify it nicely. But that's not the case here. I can't just work with b and c without making this an equation that's not equivalent to the original. Let's go back to our a and b are not both 0, which seems kind of a weird one, but let me talk to you about why. So we could have a be equal to 0, and we've looked at an instance where a is 0, 0. We've looked at an equation where we had a horizontal line, and we had y equals our y-intercept plus 0x. That's when we have a 0 in the x, when we have a horizontal line, and our equation is just y equals something. That's still standard form. We just have 0x, and we've simplified it. So it's okay if a is 0. It's also okay if b is 0. So if b is 0, you notice that we'll have an equation where x is equal to a number. Now, if an equation where y is equal to a number and we don't have an x value variable in there is a horizontal line, hopefully you've already jumped to the conclusion that an equation that has x equals just a number is our vertical line. Now, remember, a lot of these talk about a non, you know, you can't have it be a non-vertical um, line. And the reason why, a non-vertical line doesn't have a slope. It has an undefined slope. So if I think about slope-intercept form, I can't write an equation in slope-intercept form for a vertical line because it doesn't have a slope, and it doesn't have a y-intercept either. I can't write an equation in point-slope form of a vertical line because it doesn't have a slope. So I'm never going to be able to write a vertical line equation in point-slope form or slope-intercept form. The only form that works for a vertical line is standard form, and your equation is going to be x equals and a number because our b in this particular case will be 0. All right, so this is our, this is our equation in standard form. Done. Let's take a look at b. Write y minus 5 equals 4 thirds, and then in parentheses, x minus 3, in slope-intercept form. So this is our point-slope form. It looks a little ugly. Um, this is one of the points on the line, and that's our slope formula, our slope of that line. We're going to rewrite this in slope-intercept form, which again is kind of our jeans and t-shirt, our, our basic go-to formula. We use, I tend to go to that frequently. Take my equation. I'm going to use my distributive property here to get rid of these parentheses. And then I'm going to isolate my y variable by adding 5, and I end up with y equals 4 thirds x plus 1. So this represents the same line. Uh, pieces of this I can tell because I know the slope is 4 thirds. The slope is also 4 thirds. I know the y-intercept is 1. I can't really tell that from this particular equation. I just know one random point out of all the infinite points on that line. All right, let's put this into practice. The figure shows trapezoid A, B, C, D with bases A, B, and C, D. So that tells us that A, B, and C, D are parallel to each other, since 
they're giving us those as the bases. We want to write up an equation in point slope form for the line containing side BC. So here's line BC. We have two points on that line. So I'm going to use those two points to find the slope. If I'm given two points, I can automatically find the slope. It's kind of one of the, I have two points, let's find the slope. So we come up with a slope of negative 5 over 2. Now this asks for an equation in point slope form. So I'm going to pull out my point slope form. I'm going to plug in my slope. And I'm going to also plug in one of these points. Now I used for 3 just because they're positive numbers. But you really could have used um, the other point also. Um, so I could have had my equation be, equal, be y plus 2 equals negative 5 over 2. And then in parentheses, x minus 6. That would have worked just as well. Um, notice some things about our point slope form. I could have compared those two equations and said, oh, they have the same slope, but since the points that we're describing here are different, I don't actually know if those two lines are the same. I can't really tell from point slope line if I'm point slope form if I'm describing the same line, which is kind of why it's kind of that messy formula. It, it, it does some of the work there, but it's not super helpful. It's super helpful to start with, but then we want to clean it up. When do we clean it up? Write an equation in standard form for that same line. So I'm going to take that same equation that I just started with over here. I'm going to rewrite it in standard form. So I'm going to take that equation. I'm going to distribute. I'm going to get isolate the y. So I get the y by itself here. Then I'm going to move my x value over to the left-hand side to be over here. So we have ax plus by on the left-hand side. So I'm looking like that so far. 5 halves x plus y equals 13. But remember, we want to make sure that we a, b, and c are all integers, which I don't have here with my fraction. So I'm going to multiply by 2. I get 5x plus 2y equals 26. So I'm going to go through that checklist. Um, a has to be greater than, zero, greater than or equal to 0. Yep. A and b can't both be 0. I'm good to go. a, b, and c have to be all integers. Yes, yes, yes. And I can't have a common factor other than 1 for a, b, and c. Now, b and c have a common factor of 2 but it needs to be a, b, and c, so I can't really do anything else with that. Now since this is our standard form, this means that if someone took that same equation using the 6 and the negative 2 in point slope form and rewrote it in standard form, it would look exactly the same. Remember we talk about our tuxedos, we all look like little penguins and everybody looks the same. With our standard form, everyone's equation should look exactly the same. So if I compare my equation to your equation and they're the same, we go, oh, we're talking about the same line. Not so much with point slope form. So that's one way that our standard form is helpful. It helps us know that we're talking about the same line.